Hi, my name is Kerry Sherrill. I'm an amateur photographer specializing in landscapes and astrophotography. You can find me on Instagram at Cheryl Photo and Cheryl Photo Behind the Scenes and on my blog at CherylPhoto.com. In this, my first video tutorial, I'm going over how I process Milky Way photos in Lightroom and Photoshop. The first thing I do after importing all of the raw files into Adobe Lightroom is crop and straighten. It's not uncommon uh, composing at night to get a horizon that's not perfectly level. For this image, I'm going to go 8 by 10, move that over a little bit, and I'm looking at this section of the horizon. I'm just going to even that up a little bit like that. Click done. Now I'm only working on the section of the images image that I want to keep. The next thing that I do in Lightroom is remove chromatic aberration. Go to Lens Corrections and the Color tab. Click Remove Chromatic Aberration. Click on a star near the edge of your photo. And hopefully in the video it shows up there's this purple fringing. That's the chromatic aberration that can show up sometimes. And Lightroom makes it really easy to get rid of. Click the little color selector. And when you get close it'll show you blow up of the pixels and there we go pick one of the purple ones by left mouse clicking and click done and that's it no more chromatic aberration the next thing i do in lightroom is to restore a little warmth and the easiest way to do that and get a nice balance is temporarily crank up the vibrance and saturation all the way up and see how the sky is an almost uniform blue I'm going to go back up to the temperature slider and slowly raise that up Oops. until I start to get just a bit of warm color in the Milky Way itself. And then go back down and double click the word vibrance and saturation to take those back down to normal. So if you have a recent version, the new dehaze feature, uh, does a fantastic job of clarifying Milky Way photos. I try not to go above about 50, or else you introduce a bit too much noise. So we'll go right there. That's all for Lightroom. Now I go and edit in Photoshop. The first thing that I do in Photoshop is make a copy of the layer. Uh, control or command on a Mac, J, will give you a copy. That way I always have the original to go back to. And I'm going to go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. On an image like this one, uh, this is the Milky Way behind an old grain silo. Uh, and this was shot July 2016, uh, right around midnight. And a car came down the road and partially lit the silo. With an image like this where the foreground isn't solid black silhouette and you want to retain some of the color and detail, I don't do a universal camera raw filter adjustment. I go and click the adjustment brush and then set my adjustments. These are sort of a starting point. Um, up the contrast to 24, up the highlights 24, reduce the shadows by minus 24, and up the clarity by 24. And I'll start there and then make some adjustments after I paint in the areas that I want to adjust. I'm going to go down and make sure auto mask is off. I'm going to leave show mask on and hitting the right bracket key on the keyboard give myself a slightly larger brush and with auto mask off I'm just going to go over those sections nowhere near the um, or not touching the foreground it just makes it go a little quicker now turn auto mask on and just want the 
inner solid black circle to kind of touch the foreground elements. And actually reduce the size by hitting the left bracket key. And it usually does a pretty good job of auto masking. And turn the mask off. Okay. And for this one, I'm going to increase the clarity on the sky a bit more. And make the sky a little darker. And bring out the galaxy a little bit more. Okay. And you could stop here, um, and this is a this is a a well processed Milky Way photo. Now that Google has made the Nick collection N I K collection free, I strongly recommend picking that up and adding that to Photoshop. I use it on all of my Milky Way photos, and I start with the Color Effects Pro and use a couple filters from that collection. The I have it favorited under if you go to if you click all of the available ones. The first one I use, and they're in alphabetical order, is Pro Contrast. And for most of the Milky Way photos, I have found that values of 6%, 12%, and 6% produce a good result. And then I add a second filter, and that is Tonal Contrast. The default values here are way too strong for my taste. And I use 6, 12, 6, and 12 for that, and change the contrast type from standard to high pass. And click OK. I usually like to take several sequential photos of the Milky Way and stack them together and use a uh, an image stack technique for reducing uh, high ISO noise. The way I was standing on a road taking this shot and cars would come by every once in a while and I'd have to move or the shots would get overblown etc and that wasn't an option. So for this one there there's only a single image to reduce the noise here, I want to reduce the noise, but I don't want to lose the sharpness of the stars. I only want to apply the noise to the dark parts of the sky. And I'll show you how to do that. Go to, we're go, first thing we're going to do is create a selection of those dark parts of the sky. And to do that, we're going to go to Channel and hold down Control or Command on a Mac and click the thumbnail next to RGB. And what that does is select the highlights of the image. And since we want the darks, we want to invert that selection. To do that, Control or Command on a Mac, and Shift and I for Invert. And that will invert that selection. And then go to the bottom of the channels and click Save That as a New Selection. And we'll go to that selection. We're going to call double-click it and call it Darks1. And you can see, so that light part of the silo is now dark because it's not selected. This is the dark selection. But it's a bit too much of the dark, so we want to reduce it. And to do that, we're going to sort of add it on top of, our, of itself. And to do that, we're going to hold down Control or Command. Click the thumbnail for the darks channel that we darks one channel we just created. Now hold down Control or Command, Shift and Alt or Option on a Mac, and click the same thumbnail darks one again, and then save that new selection as a channel. And as you can see, it got a little darker because it's selecting less of the image. We'll call that one Darks 2. 
And I'm going to do this one more time. So control click darks 2, control shift alt or command shift option, click darks 2, and save that as a new channel. And we'll call that one darks 3. And control D to deselect or command D. And we can see. So really dark parts of the tree and darker parts of the sky have all been selected, but the lighter parts, the stars, have not. Click RGB and then go to Layer. And now the other NIC filter we're going to use to reduce noise is Define 2. And you can see here it has done a good job removing the noise, but the stars come out a little soft and blurry. So we're going to go ahead and apply that, and it will create a new layer with that noise reduction applied. Now go to Channels, and actually in this case I'm going to use Darks 2, and Control or Command click thumbnail for darks 2, go back to RGB, and layer, make sure that define noise reduction layer is selected, and click the add a layer mask. And now that noise reduction is only being applied to the dark parts of the image, and the stars remain sharp. Um, finally, I'm going to get rid of this light pole. Um, to do that, I usually use the clone stamp tool. And we'll zoom over there. And for Milky Way photos, getting rid of things with the clone stamp tool. So this pole kind of goes at that angle. I look for something close by where I can go at that angle and not hit um, big bright stars. So I'm going to go right about here. Oops. Ah, the other step that I forgot to take, the super shortcut. Um, on a PC, it's Control Shift Alt, or on a Mac, Command Shift Option and E. And what that does is create a layer that's a a copy of everything you've done so far. So now, hold down Alt, and I'm going to pick that area, and get rid of that pole, reduce the size, and I'll get rid of these wires too. For the tutorial, I'm just kind of doing this really quick, but you might want to do it with a bit more care. Up here, it goes through this sort of light area, so I'm going to start maybe there. Do that. Okay, and to save it, we're going to flatten it. Right click that top layer and click Flatten Image. Oops. And then go to, right now it's a 16-bit image. Go to Mode and change it to an 8 bits per channel image. And I save a full-size JPEG. And then if I'm going to post to Instagram, I will reduce the image size so that the width is 1080, 1080 pixels. That's the largest that Instagram will display. And I always use by cubic sharpener for reduction. And then save that for web. Save for web. I usually use 100%. Uh, size difference isn't that big. And that is it. That is how I process single Milky Way photos. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, leave comments here on YouTube or on Instagram or on my blog. Thanks for watching.